research that's been done about enlarged prostate. And almost always it comes down to hormones. And there is absolutely a hormone involved in 80% of your prostate problem. But it's not the hormone that you may have read about or heard about. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And that's what this video is about. An enlarged prostate afflicts millions of men around the world. The symptoms that, that go along with an enlarged prostate, also known as BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia, are very obvious to the men suffering from this. There's tons of research that's been done about enlarged prostate, and almost always it comes down to hormones. And there is absolutely a hormone involved in 80% of your prostate problem, but it's not the hormone that you may have read about or heard about. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience, and that's what this video is about. If you have an older male friend or family member, I promise you it won't hurt their feelings a bit if you share this video with them. And you're also welcome to share it on your Facebook page or in your groups, on Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you think it's going to help an older male friend or relative get relief from their enlarged prostate symptoms. I suspect this video is going to be quite controversial with urologists and other healthcare providers who specialize in the prostate because it's going to talk about something that although they, they know about, they've never thought about it like this. And so I've included several research studies in the show notes below to back up what I'm saying in this video. Hormones are definitely at play, and one hormone in particular is predominantly to blame for your enlarged prostate. So let's go through the seven easy steps of how to reverse your enlarged prostate, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the science. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about prescription medications, your other hormones that are also involved a little bit, and then some supplements that some people find help greatly. Other people don't really find that they help that much. Now, the hormone that's involved in 80% of your enlarged prostate problem is not testosterone, it's not DHT, it's not estrogen, it's insulin. Okay, your prostate is a gland and it responds to growth signals from hormones. Insulin is one of the preeminent growth hormones in our body. When you're eating an improper diet, you're actually causing yourself to have hyperinsulinemia in your blood all day, every day, or at least right after your meal for a few hours if you're eating the wrong foods. This insulin, when it's in high amounts in your blood, can actually bind to a receptor for IGF-1, which is intimately involved in your the cells of your prostate growing and multiplying. And so what you wind up with after years and years of hyperinsulinemia is that you've got way more cells in your prostate than you should, and the cells themselves are bigger or fatter. And all of that leads to an enlarged prostate, or BPH, and then that leads to, to squeezing on the urethra that passes through the prostate, and that's where all the urinary problems come from. So what you want to do is eat a diet that helps you keep a low normal insulin level for as many hours of the day as possible. And the way to do that, you're going to follow these seven easy steps. Step number one is to avoid all sugar in your diet, whether it's added sugar in soft drinks and desserts, or whether it's natural sugar in high sugar fruits like grapes, bananas, cherries, papaya, pineapple. Uh, these things may have some vitamins and minerals and maybe even some magical phytonutrients, but you can get those vitamins and minerals from other sources that have way less sugar and therefore you're not going to spike your insulin level. Anytime you eat or drink sugar, whether added or natural, you spike your blood glucose, which spikes your insulin level, and that makes you hyperinsulinemic. Then the insulin starts going to work, making your prostate enlarged. Now, this high insulin also has 
hundreds of other deleterious effects on every other tissue and cell in your body. But in this video, we're talking just about the prostate. Number two is to avoid all grains, even whole grain bread and stuff like that. When you start to chew up a piece of whole grain bread, there's an enzyme in your mouth called amylase, which starts to immediately break the starch in that bread down into sugar. So we're back to step number one. So by avoiding all the grains, whether it's wheat, rice, oats, or corn, all of these things spike your blood sugar, which leads to hyperinsulinemia, which is the underlying hormonal problem of an enlarged prostate. Number three is to avoid all soy products, unless it has been fermented by the, the real fermentation technique, like natto and other things, avoid soy. Soy is very estrogenic and it's going to make your estrogen to testosterone ratio inappropriate, which is going to lead to increased enlargement of the prostate. Number four is to avoid any low fat dairy product whatsoever, whether it's milk or cheese or sour cream, cream cheese. You want only full fat dairy. Okay. And in some men, they have to go to only the highest fat choices of dairy like heavy cream, butter, and ghee. Some men can get a, get away with full fat cheese and full fat yogurt and kefir, but other men have to just only use butter, ghee, and heavy cream as their only dairy sources, or they will notice uh, increased symptoms of an enlarged prostate. Number five is vegetable seed oils. These have a very inappropriate omega-6 fatty acid to omega-3 fatty acid ratio, which can lead to inflammation all over your body, but specifically in the prostate. And when a prostate is enlarged and inflamed, your enlarged prostate symptoms get even worse. And then number six is eat a low carbohydrate diet. <clears throat> Whether this is a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, eating this diet is going to keep your insulin level low normal for the majority of the day, okay? And that's the goal here is to keep your insulin level low normal. You don't want a chronically high insulin level or you're going to cause your prostate to enlarge. Then you'll suffer from the symptoms. Then step seven is intermittent fasting. You want to go without eating anywhere from 14 hours a day up to 18 hours a day. And you don't have to stop start at, at 18 hours a day. You can slowly work your way up to that. But when you fast for 14, 16, or 18 hours, that really resets your insulin level back to the low normal level, which is going to not promote prostate hyperplasia. Very, very powerful, very important. Also, intermittent fasting is free. I've got a, a big playlist about intermittent fasting. It'll pop up right here. You can go watch this after this video is done. So these seven steps above are going to give you 80% reduction in your prostate problem. Now, it took you years to grow the prostate that you have right now. So don't expect these changes in your diet to have an effect in a few days or a few weeks. It's going to take several months, if not a year, for your prostate to go back to normal size. And because when you eat this way, it's not literally going in there and shrinking your prostate. It's just stopping the signal from the hyperinsulinemia to continue to enlarge. And so when that signal of inappropriate growth goes away and your insulin level goes back to low normal, then as your prostate regenerates and rejuvenates and replaces cells, they're going to be the normal size cell and it won't replace all of them. That You'll have fewer and fewer prostate cells as the months go by. So don't expect an overnight fix with this. You didn't get in this predicament overnight and you ain't going to fix it overnight. Now let's talk about prescription medications. So there are several prescription medications on the, the market that your doctor can prescribe for you. And they do help the symptoms. They do not, however, address the root cause, which is chronic hyperinsulinemia at all. So it's, it's no crime if you want to take one of these prescriptions for a few months while you're letting your low carb, your keto, your carnivore diet have its effect. But be prepared for a long list of side effects. Some are quite serious. Now let's talk about your other hormones, your testosterone, your estrogen, and your DHT. So absolutely, without a doubt, Having a low testosterone to estrogen ratio absolutely will increase your risk of having an enlarged prostate with symptoms. But just keep in mind, you'll actually see videos out there that say that testosterone causes 
uh, enlarged prostate. Not true at all. DHT, no, it doesn't cause that. But as a man gets older, his testosterone tends to dip, especially if he's sedentary and especially if he's eating a high carbohydrate crap diet, his testosterone level is going to start to nosedive and that's going to leave his estrogen level at about the same level. But as his testosterone level goes down, his estrogen to testosterone ratio is going to go up. You see that? So if high testosterone causes an enlarged prostate, then every 18-year-old man running around on the planet would have a humongous prostate because their testosterone is sky high. That doesn't happen. It's only when you get older, your testosterone goes down. You've been eating a high carbohydrate for decades. That's when enlarged prostate happens, right? Now let's talk about the supplements. There are a few supplements, and I'm going to put a link down below if you want to try one of these. Some people report amazing 